Morning guys, it's Brent with Lagos Motorsports. We're mocking up our freshly vapor blasted intake on our 482 all aluminum tunnel port FE motor. Right now I'm just um, double checking all of our uh, push rod clearances and the way that you do that is you mock everything up. I've got bolts in every four corners or all the four corners to hold this down. Uh, our distributor is in and it's centered and I've got all of our push rods in on one side and what I do is I just uh, start and you can see this one's got about I don't know seven miles and a half at rest and I'll just go from rocker to rocker roll this one over to full lift make sure we don't have contact go to this one blah 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 and check all of them and then I'll pop over to the other side and uh, check that side so this is something very important you need to do on every engine that you build on an fe um, such as this with tunnel port heads where the push rods go down through uh, the intake ports and you got that stupid tube that gets in the way um, you got to make sure nothing rubs um, especially on a flat tap at cam um, Anything that would hinder the movement of the push rod will also hinder the movement of the lifter, which would uh, could cause problems on cam break in and cam function. So, um, yeah, so we just roll through and go step by step, make sure we got plenty of room. Um, what happens when the engine's running? I don't know, but uh, the major push rod manufacturers all say that they want about 10 thousandths clearance, which isn't much. John Causey has, uh, I've heard him say that if the push rod is close, then it's good because at full deflection, it almost gives um, the push rod something to rest on and take the harmonics out of it. A um, little bit different on flat tappet stuff though. You don't, like I say, you don't want anything binding up like that on a flat tappet motor. Um, this is gonna be monotonous. I'm gonna roll through and uh, I'll just put a check mark on each one of these as I see fit. And uh, I'll get back with you here in a second. All right, our passenger side was good. We checked the driver's side, all good. Um, the exhaust push rods, I mean, you can probably see it from here. I've got a, I've got a light shining. What's nice about the FE intakes, a light source, light source, light source. So I can shine this in here. And uh, you can see right there, I've got plenty, plenty of room. The exhaust tubes are not the problem. The intake tubes are because that tube takes up real estate obviously and uh, this cam's got a lot of lift and a small block ford lifter is just a little bit taller than an fe lifter so it gets kind of close to the roof of that tube at full at full lift but um we're in good shape <laughs> so i can take all this back apart um if you're new to engine building, you'll find that uh, precision engine building is a lot of checking and mocking up and checking and checking and checking again. And then you finally get to put it together at the end. Um, I won't get to put the intake on today because I, I forgot I'm out of the uh, tunnel port intake bolts. The intake manifold bolts are like four inches long or so and i didn't have any so they'll be here tomorrow and i'll get this thing slapped on here i want to show you one other thing i got a decent gap here because uh, we had to space our our intake manifold up um, everything worked out really good with these thicker um, flat out gaskets they're eighth inch thick but i'll just have to be uh on my bead game when i lay down the silicone it's got to be probably about a quarter inch bead but i'll make it look real nice so if you're looking for different methods of checking for push rod clearance, um, a scope is really good. Um, thick cardboard is good if you can slide that. I've got this one kind of shaped. Just slide down over the push rod down in the tube. If it goes, I'm in really good shape. Uh, obviously, I, I can also turn out all the lights in the shop and put a light, a big flashlight down in here. And you can see light appearing around our push rod but uh, everything everything was really good you just gotta be creative another tip while we're on here before you go to pull your rocker arm assembly off 
Can you see which rockers are open? So we got this one open. This one's a little bit open. This one's a lot open. These three guys are closed. But before you start popping off, uh, loosening the nuts to get these off here, you need to roll the engine over until most of the rockers are up, like most of your valves are shut. So you can see we've got number eight intake coming up. So this one is a little bit open. The rest of them are closed, except for this one is a little bit open. You just go real slow, half a turn at a time. If not, you can risk breaking the shaft on the rocker arm, uh, the rocker arm shaft that rolls down through the middle of this, and then your day is ruined. All right, I'm gonna take opportunity to pull each lifter out and reapply some assembly. You can see that that little oil hole has been doing its job. There's a good film of oil right there on the face of the lifter. And as I prime the oil pump, you get a nice little stream of oil out of there. But uh, I'm gonna go back through and re all of our lifters. And then tomorrow when our bolts come in, uh, the intake will go on. All right, our bolts come in. So we're now in the process of uh, putting intake manifold gaskets on. So silicone between the head and the gasket, imperative. Silicone or whatever you choose to use between the gasket and the intake manifold, imperative. Uh, again, I, I've mentioned this many, many times on the FE stuff. Um, this gasket is exposed to oil. If you have any kind of leak, any kind of void, any kind of anything at all, where uh, vacuum, engine vacuum is exposed, it'll suck the oil right in there. Um, this is probably the number one cause of engine smoking and oil use for the Ford FE. People just don't take the time to ensure that uh, the gaskets are installed correctly, the intake flanges are right. So, um, you know, do your due diligence here. So I've got silicone between the head and the gasket, um, and I've cleaned everything up where it's kind of smushed out a little bit. You want to make sure you get a good bond there. And now I'm just going to set the intake manifold down on it so it'll have some weight to help uh, hold those gaskets on while the sealant sets up. All right, so our intake's been sitting on our manifold for probably 20, 30 minutes. Everything is good and, and adhered to the heads. And uh, just giving everything a once over. Our lifters are lubed up. So we're going through our final checklist here before we bolt this intake manifold on. We have all of our bolts lined up. I will coat the threads with ARP lube before I put those in the cylinder head. And um, we got a big fat bead, remember, to lay down here about a quarter inch. So I have uh, sacrificed another bottle of uh, silicone with a big hole and uh, I'll use it. What I, what I do is when I'm done laying a bead or using it, I'll just let some hang out and it solidifies and I just pop it out and keep going. But uh, need a big bead. So it's gonna be very important. See this gap right here? It's gonna be very important to start like up here. Make sure this gap is filled and then continue on with uh, even over on this side, you can see the gap right here. So first we'll just put some silicone around our ports, around our water ports, and then lay our beads for our in rails and then set our intake manifold down. All right, our intake is on. And if your silicone bead game is on point, you get a nice smooth transition all the way around. So that'll set up over the next couple hours and We'll be in good shape. I'll just continue to work. Uh, we'll go ahead. We've got our card plate on so that nothing can fall down into the ports. Distributors in here so nothing can fall down into the oil pan. I'll get our basket installed so nothing can fall down into there. I'm really not a fan of, of doing things this way. Um, I try to make provisions for for customers who want a, a certain look, but the valve covers that we're gonna use are the Baldy pent roofs, not Baldy. Baldy is a different valve cover. 
the pent roofs without um, without any breathers. So that means that we have to vent the crankcase through um, here and and through the back. Through the back, um, let me grab a flashlight so you can see it. These aftermarket blocks have a lot of big holes right underneath that basket and breather. Um, that and coincidentally, that's right underneath the counterweight. And what happens is it just totally floods. Man, I've got ARP lube all over me. Um, totally just bombards the bottom of that breather with oil. So we'll just have to see how it goes. And the aftermarket blocks are worse because the holes are bigger. So we've got um, a basket. So hopefully we can't get anything through there. And then our breather will go on top just like that. And then we'll have a push, push on breather and oil fill right here. So we can fill the engine with the oil right there. Stainless, so it doesn't look nasty. Um, okay, all I can do now is uh, continue to assemble. So we'll get our push rods in, our rocker arms in. You've seen that before, so you don't need to watch it again. And then we'll just continue building out towards here. Once our bead is on, um, I can put our uh, water pump on. And I waited to do that just so I could have access to uh, make sure that I smooth out that bead of silicone there. But there's uh, nothing that says we can't keep on moving out this direction. Our pulleys will be here Monday. And uh, we'll we'll have this thing buttoned up here pretty soon. All right, we got our Edelbrock water pump on. Um, I got this temporarily put on with their fasteners because there's not enough room to get a socket on, on a couple of these fasteners. So I ordered some stainless uh, socket head fasteners to go with the water pump. So I'll change those out. Got our water neck on, uh, ran the valves one more time. Um, I'm waiting, so it's just been a couple hours since we laid the silicone down. I'm gonna wait till probably tomorrow to prime the oil pump again. But we got our MSD distributor in there with a black cap, black cap. Um, yeah, so I just need uh, I just need a few more fasteners. We got our rear breather put on. I don't have a push on breather or push on cap, so I had to order that. Uh, we're almost there, guys. Uh, our March pulleys will be in on Monday, and I can get those bolted on. So all I have left to do is put the pulleys on, put the alternator on, change those bolts out, and um, put our cap on, put our plug, plugs and wires in, and we'll be ready to roll. This fitting that goes into the manifold, um, the threads were just really, really loose on that. We'll just keep our fingers crossed and see how this plays out. Um, I put some, well, I wrapped it with tape, thread tape, and a little bit of silicone. Uh, there's just not much I can do there. So I, I contemplated, um, drilling and tapping this for a half inch pipe plug but i just didn't have enough room above uh above the plug inside inside the casting um, i'm pretty confident that that will stay put in the event that it doesn't then we'll get an oversized pipe plug and just plug this and plug this and not run a bypass hose um, which we do with electric water pumps anyway it wouldn't hurt anything but uh, we'll just see how, how that holds up. It's just something I don't, don't have control over. And, and you really don't find that stuff out until um, you start messing with it. Just worn out over the years. Um, one thing I wanted to point out. So look. Hold on a second. Put this valve cover down. What do you notice in between? 
all this stuff here. So one of the biggest, one of the, <laughs> one of the biggest things you can say to a bunch of uh, Ford FE purists is you don't have to use the drip tins, you know, that go under the stands. And if you want to start a fight on the internet, that's a good way of doing it. I don't know. That's, I think some people would rather you tell them that their wife is ugly than to say you don't need to use these drip tins. For what it's worth, I've never used a set of drip tins on any Epi engine that I've ever built in my entire life. They're not necessary. But to prove that they're not necessary, this is a factory tunnel port intake. If you were to put some kind of a drip tin under here, you know, to try and, and funnel the oil back, you know, most intakes have all this cut out, you know, so that oil can fall down in there. This intake obviously doesn't have that. And obviously you would know no difference. Uh, modern single plane intakes like the Victor intake and uh, the track heat and, and that sort of thing, they don't have that either. So. It's just immaterial, doesn't matter, don't need them, don't care. All right, so I think this will be part three for us putting this together, the assembly series. We're almost there. Um, if you guys want to go ahead and throw up your guess on how much horsepower this will make, it is not a 427. It is a 482 Pond Aluminum Block Epi Power aluminum tunnel port heads factory aluminum tunnel port intake manifold T and D rockers a uh, a custom solid flat tap at camshaft I gave you the specs on the last video and listen guys so we're not wasting this engine on a flat tap it okay I've get, I've got that comment several times you all can just give that up um, this isn't just a, a Summit racing flat tappet and a set of, you know, Chicom lifters. This is a nitrided custom camshaft. It's got trend tool steel lifters in it. We needed to do that to keep the geometry correct in the intake manifold with those tubes. I've had problems in the past. Uh, hydraulic roller and some solid roller lifters are tall and it just jacks that geometry up because the lifter is higher and then that push your, puts your push rod at a um, at a steeper angle and then the push rods hit the tubes. You do not want to get into removing and replacing those tubes and we are not wasting this engine on a solid flat tap at camshaft. Alright, so I don't want to hear any more about that. But go ahead and put up your your best guess on how much horsepower this thing will make. Um, we still got parts coming in and I'll probably have it done, you know, finished, ready to rock and roll by the end of next week. And then we'll just have to jockey around my schedule and the weather and, and the dyno schedule and that sort of thing to see if we can get it on the dyno. But thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking with me through all these videos. One of these days when I'm smart enough, I'll figure out how to just kind of make little subsections in YouTube where you can watch all the videos of one particular build and then go to all the videos of another particular build, that sort of thing. All right, hope you guys are having a good weekend. I will talk to you soon.